It's the one place in Las Vegas where wildlife takes refuge. Historic water infrastructure springs to life. We believe a dream garden is an achievable goal. And there are many more stories at the Springs Preserve where all that matters is what's elemental. Preserve isn't just a welcome retreat from the hustle and bustle of city life for our human guests. It's also an eco island amidst a concrete jungle for many of our native and visiting wildlife. In fact, we've got so much wildlife scurrying around, specialized cameras help us track activity in areas and times that we can. More than 100 acres of the Springs Preserve is preserved as pristine desert landscape. And when you come out and explore this open natural area, you can find a whole host of wildlife flying, running, and swimming about. We've got over 150 different species of migratory birds. There's various mammals, reptiles, invertebrates. With the introduction of some of our conservation areas, we have amphibians and fish now as well. We strive to make this a welcome and comfortable environment for all our guests, even the wild ones. So our restoration ecologist is constantly evaluating the landscape for opportunities to give these wild critters a healthy habitat to call home. And to be sure all is well, our zoology staff regularly conducts wildlife monitoring activities using telemetry, tracking equipment, visual encounter surveys, and observations. When we're curious about an area or time of day that we can't quite cover, we bring in the cameras. As part of our monitoring efforts at Springs Reserve, we oftentimes use wildlife cameras uh, to help us get a glimpse of things at, at off-peak hours when staff aren't present, or you know, it's just hard to be everywhere um, at one time. And so those cameras give us a really good view at what's going on in the natural areas, different wildlife activity, um, sometimes pops up, you know, new species that maybe we haven't seen at Springs Preserve in the past. So, so it's really cool just with, uh, to help in those monitoring efforts. These cameras help us capture the wildlife in their natural state, giving us eyes on animal activity that we may otherwise miss and giving us the chance to catch some new visitors. So recently we got some footage of raccoon activity down in our wetland. So, and that was really interesting. That was new to our species list here at Springs Reserve. Um, we hadn't had a, a recorded observation of raccoons on site. And you can definitely find uh, raccoons here in Southern Nevada, and it's gonna be more associated with water. It's just not a common species, like maybe you might find more back east or in the Midwest where you'd, uh, you'd find them a lot more uh, out and about. We've also captured footage of some of the more popular urban wildlife you'd expect to see in Southern Nevada. Foxes, burrowing owls, and of course, those wily coyotes. We'll see them from time to time, just depending on staff uh, when, we're, when we're out doing our monitoring efforts. Uh, just in person too, we'll see them out in the distance. Um, we've seen their scat, we've seen tracks. So, um, so that's one that's really common just here in the Las Vegas Valley to see. So it's, it's not surprising to see those animals and their presence here at Springs Preserve. And don't be surprised if you catch a glimpse of any of this mix of unique and amazing wildlife during your next visit too. Visitors definitely gonna see all sorts of creepy crawlies, right? So they'll see lots of different reptiles, um, lots of lizards, you might see the occasional snake, um, lots of invertebrates. Um, that you might come across, but then also some of the, the other fauna. So you might see ground squirrels, cottontail rabbits. If you're an avid birder, this is the place for you to come. We've got our Cienega wetlands, we've got our pond system, we've got a bird group that comes out on a regular basis and they go all over the property. They'll see lots of, uh, lots of different birds in our gardens as well. So this could be from hummingbirds, mockingbirds, um, killdeer, all the way up to birds of prey. Um, so hawks, um, owls, that sort of thing. Might be able to see um, different types of herons. So 
and depending on the time of year, um, yeah, I definitely see a, a large variety. It's important to remember that the Springs Preserve is not a drop-off site for wildlife and or unwanted pets. But bring your sense of adventure, your camera, and even your binoculars, and we think you'll capture some interesting sightings along the way. So when, when you're out uh, hiking at Springs Preserve and come across wildlife, I'd say enjoy the moment. Get a good look, you know, observe it. If you got a camera, uh, take some good pictures or some video. If you got binoculars with you, you get that closer look. But really don't, uh, don't try to engage or pick up the animals. So, um, you know, we really want to promote good environmental stewardship here at the preserve and wildlife are, are part of that. So it's really just kind of respecting them in the natural habitat. Wagon, train, or trek through the birthplace of Las Vegas, we've got 110 acres of native habitats, archaeological sites, and wildlife sanctuaries just waiting to be discovered. And with a trail system as varied as ours, there's a path for everyone, whatever your chosen mode of transportation. For ticket pricing and to plan your next wander-filled adventure, start at springspreserve.org. It may have been a promising water source that brought people to Las Vegas, but it was the network of pipes, pumps, valves, and faucets that connected them to the water sources they needed to survive and thrive. Remnants of these historic structures can still be seen throughout the Springs Preserve, above and below ground. They stand as reminders of water's role in Las Vegas' growth, the immense effort it takes to deliver water to your tap, and the importance of preserving this resource for our future. Because we have all of this historic water infrastructure here at the Springs Preserve, it's the perfect place to tell the story about the history of that water infrastructure. And so we want to make sure that we're doing our job preserving that history and preserving these structures so we can tell these stories in the future. The Springs Preserve is the site of the original water source of Las Vegas, where water bubbled to the surface and provided life-sustaining resources for early settlers, travelers, and wildlife alike. As the population of this small desert town grew, it quickly became apparent that infrastructure to protect and safely deliver this resource would be necessary. The improvements that were made out here helped improve the water quality, helped improve the flow of the water, uh, and also allowed Las Vegas to grow as a town. Um, without that water infrastructure, Las Vegas wouldn't have been able to grow. Much of these improvements began in the early 1920s by the Las Vegas Land and Water Company, with the addition of roofs to protect the springs, reservoirs to contain the water, a settling basin to remove sediment, and large redwood staved pipes to transport it. In recent years, preserve archaeologists excavated a portion of the main line that went from the springs to downtown Las Vegas and placed it on display at Boomtown 1905 for guests to witness firsthand. Now, if you're out here on the site of the Springs Preserve, you can see old buildings, old structures, you can see well derricks, settling basins, reservoirs, all those things. But what you don't see is what's underneath the ground. Between all of those structures, there's pipes running between them. The earliest pipes we would have had on site here would have been constructed out of redwood stave or redwood uh, logs, either built into a pipe or drilled out a uh, hollow core. Uh, those redwood stave pipes would transport the water from the springs to the reservoir. Uh, where the water could be treated, uh, chlorine, other, other chemicals used to treat and to help clean the water before it was pumped on to Las Vegas through those large 30-inch redwood mainline pipes. With the pipe work laid, we needed a way to get the water from the springs to the residents. The original pump station was built in 1942, soon after the Clark Street pump station took shape and still stands today. And then about 1955, shortly after the Las Vegas Valley Water District was formed, the pump station that you see behind us, the Clark Street Pump Station, was erected. And it's a, it's a very uh, specific type of construction. It's an industrial construction. And very similar to some sort of metal corrugated building construction that we see out associated with Hoover Dam. Uh, inside of the Clark Street Pump Station, you still have the existing 12-cylinder uh, large diesel engine, as well as all the pumps that were originally installed in the 1950s. The team looks forward to making the pump station an open exhibit for guests to experience this historic piece of our water delivery system. 
There's some really interesting things that we found as we were doing our work on the restoration uh, evaluation of the Clark Street pump station. The original engines uh, are still in there, the original pumps are still in there. We still see some other things. In fact, we see penciled out calculations on one of the door jams uh, at the entrance of the Clark Street pump station, looking at gallons per hour that would have been uh, coming out of the pump station. So it's really interesting to see those small touches like that. We know that the people that worked for the water district were dedicated people who were working hard to make sure that water was being, being moved to the right places in the valley. So it's interesting to get an insight uh, to people in the 1950s working in these sites, looking at their calculations. In addition to the Redwood Pipe and Pump Station exhibits, staff is also completing restoration work on a settling basin that was built around 1928 to protect it from the elements. They also continue ongoing efforts to preserve the many well derricks throughout the springs. The well derricks on site, we have four of them, were restored originally in 1999. Because of issues with the ground surface and subsidence, well derrick number five was never restored. And so we're currently looking at plans to stabilize that well derrick and put it back together so it can be there as a symbol for the Las Vegas Valley Water District for years to come. The work brings history to life and serves as a lesson in understanding and appreciating the value of water to our community, as well as those who work to deliver it to us each and every day. Being able to understand how water has moved around the valley in a historic context helps people understand better what it takes to do that, uh, the efforts taken uh, to do that, and the hard work that the people of the Las Vegas Valley Water District put in every day to make sure the water comes out of your tap. And to top off your history lesson, you can visit our Waterworks exhibit. Get a modern behind the scenes look at the journey water takes to reach your tap. Because at the Springs Preserve, we know that the best way to encourage action is through engaging education. And it's more important than ever to have all Southern Nevadans join in the water conservation effort. Well, we know that we're going through a historic drought here in Southern Nevada. It's been going on for many years. And the conservation efforts uh, that the people living in the Las Vegas Valley have undertaken have really made a significant difference to the consumption of water here. But understanding a little bit better the history of that water and how that water gets to your tap maybe makes you appreciate a little bit more uh, about what you need to do uh, personally and in your own home to conserve and save water. It's very important to us. It's very important to the future of Las Vegas, very important to the future of the Las Vegas Valley that we understand um, the process and what it takes to get water from Lake Mead out of your tap. Soulful sounds and delectable cuisine fill our senses as we celebrate the contributions of African Americans to our community at our 10th annual Black History Month Festival on Saturday, February 15th. Bring the whole family for art, music, food, and dance at this can't-miss event. Find all the details and get your tickets at springspreserve.org. The nation's longest-running, most prestigious recognition program for creative teens returns once again to the Springs Preserve. The Scholastic Art and Writing Awards celebrate students discovering their artistic powers and sharing them with the world. Thousands of entries are carefully judged by professional artists and writers for prizes, scholarships, and a chance at national recognition. The program introduces energetic youth to a world of possibilities, where they can join past recipients like Andy Warhol, Sylvia Plath, Robert Redford, Stephen King, Lena Dunham, and Zach Posen. Our gallery will be packed with paintings, sculptures, and writings submitted by talented students from across Southern Nevada. You can witness these masterpieces on display at the Springs Preserve, January 26th through March 30th. What better way to spread some holiday cheer than with a Springs Preserve gift membership? After all, it's one gift that keeps on giving. A gift of community, family, history, education, culture, and with this much variety all in one place, there's something for everyone on your list, or even yourself. Give those you love year-round access to the Springs Preserve and Nevada State Museum, discounts on activities and in the cafe and gift shop, and exclusive member previews and events. Our annual membership starts at just $30. Learn more at springspreserve.org. Cheese, jeans, balsamic vinegar, leather, and wine, all things that get better with age. Something else that does? 
a garden. Most take more than a decade to reach their full potential. And now our very own botanical garden is a teenager, making it the perfect time to consider how it's evolved over the years and the changes coming its way. It's a great time of year to evaluate your landscape at home. How is it aged? Is it time for a refresh? Take a hard look and ask yourself and your plants some rather difficult questions. It's difficult to, to judge plants and say, well, you're too old or you're too mature, or you're too rangy and leggy, or you're not attractive enough to be in this garden anymore, but that's really what you have to do. So you have to pick and choose the plants that still look great and still are kind of filling whatever design role is necessary for that site. So yeah, cleaning out stuff that's not doing well and then putting in things that are going to complement the mature specimens that are already here. Sometimes the solution may not involve drastic changes, but rather a little trim here and a new plant there. Or if you have some hardier woody plants like shrubs that are approaching their teen years, it might be time for a rejuvenation pruning where you cut the plant almost all the way to the ground. Be sure you, you do your research before you start cutting. But you can cut shrubs to the ground and then they'll regrow often in a much tighter form and they'll regrow more quickly because they have a large established root system to pull from. And that's a good way to kind of freshen up the landscape without having to spend a lot of money or buy new plants. As you evaluate your garden changes, know it's okay to experience some growing pains. Our garden is now 13 years young and we love every mature plot. But our needs have evolved and electrical lines are now needed in this space. So our garden will soon be undergoing a bit of an upgrade and makeover. We're calling it the electrical expansion and what it's meant to do is bring power to parts of the garden that currently don't have any. So that when we have an event that's out in, on the back side of our property, like Haunted Harvest for example, we have to run big power cables all the way to it. We'll use this dirt moving as an opportunity to consider our best and not so great plant performers and perhaps introduce new species to our collection. We are planning to add and kind of spruce up all of the beds in uh, the area we call Cactus Alley, which the, uh, the electrical expansion will be going right along one of the main pathways through there. And it's just a chance to add plants to the beds or remove things that are kind of underperforming or half dead and just really um, I'm taking a hard look at our desert plant collections and trying to bring in stuff that we don't have for our Mojave collection and also kind of pick out um, some of the showier things or things that I'm excited about for the, that are representative of some of the other deserts. And when all is said and done, you can count on a garden experience you've grown to expect from us. You'll still be able to have a really similar visitor experience just to kind of be immersed in the plant world, surrounded by greenery, you're able to look at these exotic forms that you don't see everywhere else. And we'll do our best to make sure that when the contractors are all done, that the garden looks better than it did when they got here. We're going to keep as many areas of the garden open as possible. But even while construction is underway, we've still got plenty of garden inspiration for guests to enjoy. From food producing plants and historically themed plantings out at Boomtown to a journey around the globe in our deserts of the world garden. Guests can also use this opportunity to explore our natural area, trail system, and beautiful Cienega, where you'll see the best of our desert landscape on display and even some native wildlife scurrying around. If you venture out to Cottonwood Grove, you may even catch a glimpse of two of Fritz's favorite native plants. There's one of my favorites is a perennial gourd called the buffalo gourd which um, is also called the stinking gourd. So if you rub its leaves it's a, kind of a, like a unique combination of maybe like onions and body odor if you're into that kind of thing. And then it, it makes a fruit with edible seeds basically like a baseball sized gourd that if you let it dry kind of turns into a natural rattle. And they're pretty, they're pretty charming. And there's another gourd out there called the coyote gourd, a second perennial gourd. And the way these things survive the desert is pretty interesting. They have a massive, relatively massive, underground tuber that stores water and nutrients for the lean times. And so that's how they stay green or bluish green during the hot season. We're always here to share our favorites, gardening tips and tricks, and answer your questions. Our gardening staff and our signage throughout property is here to guide you along the way. We're here to answer your gardening questions, and we're here to provide an example of what you might be able to do in your own yard. Um, we'll still offer tours of the open parts of the garden, 
And there's all sorts of classes and workshops that you can find out about on our website. You, know, you can take a look at some of our signage, uh, write down the name, and look it up online and see if you think it's a good fit for you. you can, you'll be able to find out how big it gets and sort of what its needs are too. Not only the possibility for changing the plants out in your garden, but seasonal changes, you know, the way the foliage changes color, the way you walk into the garden one day and then the next day all of a sudden one plant is completely in full bloom and it changes the whole look of the garden. One thing is for certain, change brings about substantial growth. Gardens are incredibly dynamic. It's kind of a, a reflection of life itself. Things are always changing and it's just, if you're ready or willing to accept change then things are a lot easier for you. Holding on to the past is kind of counterproductive and it's an opportunity for everyone to see new plants. Even after all the holiday packages have been unwrapped, there's still a chance to give one last gift to Mother Earth by donating your live Christmas tree to a valley-wide recycling program. The Christmas tree recycling program will gratefully accept your tree and chip it into a life-giving, water-saving, sweet-smelling layer of mulch that will cover our community parks and gardens, including right here at the Springs Preserve. Please remember to remove all non-organic objects such as lights, wire, tinsel, and ornaments prior to drop off. Flocked trees cannot be recycled. From December 26th through January 15th, drop off your Christmas tree at the Springs Preserve or at one of more than 30 drop sites across the valley to be recycled and reused at no charge. See springspreserve.org for details. Tis the season for gift giving, merry making, and most importantly, festive feasting. The Divine Cafe has something for every diet. So whether you're looking for a family brunch spot, quick grab and go meal, or an hour or two to make your week happier, they've got you covered. And now with a fresh look to match its always fresh dishes. All of our food is made from scratch. So we're a scratch kitchen, so everything that we get in is fresh from our suppliers. We hand pick all of our produce and, and Chef is always creating something uh, with it. Everything, every day is, is something with the new veggies and he loves, he loves working with them. Not only are the individual ingredients fresh, Divine's dynamic menu delights our guests' taste buds while accommodating a variety of dietary needs. We pretty much change our menu every six months, trying to do a little bit of a seasonal flair to it. And so we have a lot of new uh, gluten-sensitive options and vegan and vegetarian. After six years of serving our hungry guests and community, it was time to give the place a little sprucing up with a blend of modern design and casual ambiance. We've got beautiful new wood look flooring and uh, the brand new tables, brand new chairs, so it's got a really modern modern flair to it that uh, it's just warmed up the space so much and uh, softened it a little bit too. Uh, the noise level isn't quite so so high as it was with the concrete floor so uh, it's just created a, a beautiful warm new atmosphere. Making it even more perfect of a setting for the always welcoming, always entertaining and always delicious lineup of events. We have happy hour every Thursday, which is so fun. We have live entertainment, and the menu changes almost every week. It's a real fresh and fun menu. We have uh, weekend brunches, that, uh, a special brunch menu. We change that up every month or so. We have the other events, the special events, like the Mother's Day brunch, Easter brunch. We do New Year's Eve up here, which the view is just incredible, and it's so easy to get to. People love it. Guests also love Divine's seasonal, cultural, and otherwise uniquely themed and interactive cooking classes. Our cooking classes we do now about quarterly, and it's a total immersion, hands-on experience. We usually have three groups, three to four groups, and they, they get a part of the menu that we design. They get all the recipes and all that, and each one is teamed up with the chef, and then they go back in the kitchen and prepare, prep and prepare the whole meal and then get to eat it. So, <laughs> eat the fruits of their labor. And when you just want to sit back and enjoy top-notch service and delectable eats, Divine's Catering can make any vision for a personal or corporate event come to life. There's so many beautiful places and, and uh, out, indoor and outdoor to have events here at the Springs. Um, we do weddings, we do corporate events, we do corporate picnics. Um, 
Boomtown has has opened up a whole new just set to do that Western flair stuff that everybody looks for. Uh, the cafe itself at, in the evenings, except for on Thursdays, is open for private events as well, and it's a beautiful spot. Stop by and savor the flavors of Divine Cafe during your next outing to the Springs Preserve. The cafe is open 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Monday through Friday and until 4 p.m. on weekends. Visit springspreserve.org to learn more and to peruse the current menu offerings so when you arrive, you can sit back and enjoy the service with a view. The cafe inherited this beautiful, absolutely amazing space. It's so relaxing and and just nowhere else in the city can you find a third story tree line view of the city. I mean, the, the view from here is just amazing. Quench the weekday blues with happy hour at Divine Cafe every Thursday from 4 to 8 p.m. Enjoy tasty cocktails, delicious nibbles, and live music complete with scenic views of the Strip. You won't find a better way to escape and unwind. Check out the specialty menu and learn more at springspreserve.org. Gardening, cooking, sustainable living. However you're resolving to improve your life, We've got it all right here at the Springs Preserve and a host of fascinating and fun classes to get your new year, new you vision off to the perfect start. Find a class that speaks to you at springspreserve.org or join us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to be the first to know when new classes are added. There's a lot more to discover, so join us next time here at the Springs Preserve where curious city dwellers, changing gardens, artistic youth, and cafe creations mingle to bring new life to Las Vegas.